The stakes could not have been higher. If we had failed to reach an agreement on the budget, there were extreme voices threatening to take America for the first time in our 247-year history into default on our national debt. Nothing, nothing would have been more irresponsible. Nothing would have been more catastrophic. Our economy would have been thrown into recession. Retirement accounts for millions of Americans would have been, dec been decimated. Eight million Americans would have lost their jobs. Default would have been, have, have destroyed our nation's credit rating, which would have made everything from mortgages to car loans to funding for the government much more expensive. And it would have taken years to climb out of that hole. And America's standing as the most trusted, reliable financial partner in the world would have been shattered. So, it was critical to reach an agreement. And it's very good news for the American people. No one got everything they wanted, but the American people got what they needed. We averted an economic crisis, an economic collapse. We're cutting spending and bringing the deficits down at the same time. We're protecting important priorities from Social Security to Medicare to Medicaid to veterans to our transformational investments in infrastructure and clean energy. I want to commend Senator Speaker McCarthy. You know, uh, he and I, uh, we uh, and our teams, we were able to get along, get things done. We were straightforward with one another, completely honest with one another, respectful with one another. Both sides operated in good faith. Both sides kept their word. And I also want to commend other congressional leaders. House Minority Leader Jeffries, Senate Majority Leader Schumer, Senate Minority Leader McConnell. They acted responsibly and put the good of the country ahead of politics. The final vote in both chambers was overwhelming, far more bipartisan than anyone thought was possible. So I want to thank the members of Congress who voted to pass this agreement, which I'm going to sign tomorrow and become the law. Good morning, friends. So it is official. President Biden is passing a brand new piece of legislation that is supported by both Republicans and Democrats. This huge bill includes several items and the president has made it clear that not everyone will be happy about this deal. So in this morning's video, I will be sharing with you exactly what is in and what is out of this debt ceiling agreement. My dear friends, please do make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, do stay tuned because I'll be announcing the winners of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter the weekly giveaway, friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, my friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. President Biden just celebrated an averted crisis. In his first speech to the nation from the Oval Office, the president hailed the budget agreement that eliminates a potential for an unprecedented government default and that he said would have been catastrophic for the U.S. and global economies. The bipartisan measure was approved by the Senate late Thursday night after passing the House in yet another late session the night before. President Biden said passing this budget agreement was critical. The stakes could not have been higher. Nothing would have been more catastrophic. The agreement was hashed out by President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, giving Republicans some of their demanded federal spending cuts, but holding the line on major Democratic priorities. It raises the debt limit until 2025, after the 2024 presidential election, and provides legislators budget targets for the next two years. President Biden used this opportunity to itemize the achievements of his first term as he runs for re-election, including support for high-tech manufacturing, infrastructure investments, and financial incentives for fighting climate change, while at the same time highlighting how he forestalled steeper spending cuts pushed by the GOP that he said would have rolled back his agenda. President Biden stated, we're protecting important priorities from Medicare and Social Security to Medicaid to veterans to our transformational investments in infrastructure and clean energy. Even as he pledged to continue working with Republicans, 
Biden also drew contrast with the opposing party, particularly when it comes to raising taxes on the wealthy, something the Democratic president has always sought. President Biden largely remained quiet publicly during the high stake talks, a decision that frustrated some members of his party. But according to officials, it was intended to give space for both sides to reach a deal and for lawmakers to vote it to his desk. Biden also praised McCarthy and his negotiators for operating in good faith and all congressional leaders for ensuring swift passage of the legislation. Overall, the 99-page bill restricts spending for the next two years and changes some policies, including imposing new work requirements for older Americans who receive food aid and greenlighting an Appalachian natural gas pipeline that many Democrats oppose. Some environmental rules were modified to help streamline approvals for infrastructure and energy projects. It is a move long sought by moderates in Congress. The Congressional Budget Office says it could actually expand total eligibility for federal food assistance with the elimination of work requirements for veterans, homeless individuals, and young people who are leaving foster care. In addition, the legislation also bolsters funds for defense and veterans. The agreement also imposes an automatic overall 1% cut to spending programs if Congress fails to approve its annual spending bills. It is a measure designed to pressure lawmakers of both parties to reach consensus before the end of the fiscal year in September. Republicans wanted about $71 billion in IRS funding over the next decade to be cut. In fact, they passed legislation to do so upon taking the majority in the House. The debt ceiling deal cuts back some new money for the Internal Revenue Service and rejects Biden's call to roll back tax breaks on corporations and the wealthy to help cover the nation's deficits. But the White House said the IRS's plan to step up enforcement of tax laws for high-income earners and corporations would still continue. According to Representative French Hill, a Republican of Arkansas, the agreement would stop the first year of the 10-year increase in the IRS budget. In both chambers, more Democrats backed the legislation than Republicans, but both parties were critical to its passage. So friends, what do you think should have been added or removed from this legislation? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. To my marvelous and most magnificent friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Saturday. Thank you so much, friends, for being here and for being part of this community. The two winners of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway is Naomi Bell and Rosemary Brown. Congratulations, my dearest friends. To claim your gift cards, please check your notifications page and send me a message. Or you could message me on my Facebook page. Friends, I will be announcing two more new winners in a video later today. So please make sure that you do stay tuned for those videos. Remember, if you'd like to enter these weekly giveaways, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on, my friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed weekend.